Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another prep with me video. I have a huge list of things to do today, so let's get right into it. Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Tressa and I'm a fifth year, fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make lots of teaching and learning videos here on YouTube and I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. All right guys, so it is a Friday, January 29th and I am in my classroom today without kids. It is a PD day here at school. So all the teachers are here and there are some meetings happening throughout the day, but I got pretty lucky today and I'm not involved in very many of the meetings. So I actually have a lot of time for like self-directed PD or getting things done around my classroom. So I thought I'd take you along with me and you could enjoy a little prep with me video and help me tackle some of the tasks that I need to get done around my classroom. It's actually 10 o'clock right now. So we had a staff meeting to start the day. We had prayer and we kind of set the expectations for the day. And then my grade five, six team had just like a hallway meeting where we could social distance. And we just set some goals and looked at like a continuum of supports. So I'm done with meetings for a couple of hours. And like I already said, I have a huge list that I have been jotting things down all week of things that I wanna do around the classroom, just looking around, seeing some of the things. Nothing like major, but a few tasks that I will be really happy when I actually get accomplished. So I'm actually gonna start out, if you can peek behind me, you can see that I have all of like my booklets and things that I pass out to students on a regular basis that we like continually work in are in these orange bins. Anyway, I just don't really want the orange bins. My kind of theme, I don't really have a classroom theme, but I try to do a lot in like blacks and whites because I really like that. So I'm actually gonna match all of these bins and have black and white back here instead of the orange. So I thought I would start with that. And I also have to make a couple more of these labels for a few baskets and things around here, just so that I feel a little bit more organized if I ever have a sub or anything like that, they know where they can find any of my things. So let's jump right in and get started. share I got these off of Amazon they were actually relatively inexpensive I also use them on my bookshelf every student has their own and that's where they keep their independent reading like novels or picture books that they are currently reading and I think you probably noticed but they're super easy to put together and they actually last that was my biggest concern when buying these was like I wanted something durable but also inexpensive to get like a whole class set so I will link these down below I highly recommend them all right, one of my maps, my map of the world, fell down the other day, so I'm gonna pop that back up now, and then I also have a cute little explore sign that I wanna put up at the top, so that is the next thing I'm gonna tackle on my list. but I'm obsessed with labeling everything but part of it is because I'm worried that like I would have to quarantine or something and have a sub for a long period of time and then he or she wouldn't be able to find everything in my classroom and I also like to just help my kids out if everything's labeled they can find things or if my aide is looking for something so there's a few bins and baskets and drawers around my desk that are not properly labeled right now so I am going to do that next and just make sure everything is labeled pretty generally because obviously like baskets, I might put different things in them as the year progresses, but just have labels on them. Um, one of my tricks for labels, because at my school we are allowed to use the colored printer, but 
it's a bit of a hassle and there's only one color printer in the office so I can't print there directly from my computer so I need to like put it on a USB and then go and print there so I don't do it very often. So I always use chalkboard labels around my classroom and that way you can go on Teachers Pay Teachers and there's a ton of like pre-made free chalkboard labels and I can print those off just on black and white and they turn out so cute and it really fits my like black and white theme around my classroom. So I'm going to do that next. Saturday. I am back for day two of prep with me and I am here because I did not get to tackle all of the items on my list yesterday and I'm also just okay with being here. Um, I kind of gave myself the option like I didn't need to come in. There's nothing that I really have to accomplish from here today but there's quite a few things that I still want to get done and I was telling my friend yesterday, like I'm kind of enjoying coming in on the weekends, but I feel like it's just because of COVID and like I really don't have any other plans or anything to do. If I was at home right now, I would just be lying on the couch watching TV. And so I got up, I got dressed, put a little makeup on and got here. So I just feel like I'm having a more productive day just because I decided to come in. And every time I'm here, I'm, I get a little bit done and it always makes my week ahead so much better. So I got some Starbucks on the way, treated myself, and I am here alone, which you know I absolutely love being here by myself because I get so much more done. Um, yesterday we had the whole day and I had a couple of meetings, but probably only about two hours of the day I was actually in meetings. 
So I had the opportunity to get a lot done, but I feel like just when there's a lot of people around, like some of the things aren't available, like somebody's using the copier or somebody else is using the cutter or somebody's using the laminator when you want to. And you also just get caught up in like social moments where you're just chatting with other teachers. So I never get as much done as I would like to, but those days are also really enjoyable. So I thought I would come in today and take you through some more of my tasks that I'm trying to get done. Anyway, yesterday at the end of the day, I decided to tackle one of my empty bulletin boards. So I'll show you in a minute, but on the other side of the room, I have an empty bulletin board and it has been empty for the whole year. I have periodically put up anchor charts there, but they always tend to fall down. So I have a different plan for anchor charts today and I have a plan for that bulletin board and I'm really excited about it. So what I have decided to do, a little bit of background. My students work really hard in grade five and in my classroom on multiplication and my PLC, so my grade five, six team has been really, really trying to hone in on multiplication skills and help our kids get better at those because we really recognized that our kids are leaving us and they still don't have their basic facts. And so I truly believe it needs to start earlier. Like it should be like grade two, three, but we have noticed that they're coming to us without their facts. So what I can do as a grade five teacher is whatever I can do when the kids get to me. So I've done a lot already this year. I really, it's like my professional growth plan goal to help my kids with their multiplication facts. So you'll see like way, way over there on the door, I have facts and so do all the other grade five, six teachers and the kids have to like say multiplication facts as they're leaving the room. And I've been doing like certain facts every week. So when I send a newsletter home to parents, they know which facts we're working on in the classroom. And we have been playing games to work on basic facts. We've been doing worksheets and math minutes, which leads me to my next point. My students actually, I can't speak for everyone, but they seem to enjoy doing math minutes. And I think that that has to do partly with how I structure it and as a child, I was not good at math. So I am very in tune with like math anxiety and how difficult math can be on kids. And I think the same applies for like reading and writing, but I think like math is its own beast for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, I always try to structure activities so that kids who are either slower or struggling in math do not feel like an intense pressure to perform, I guess. So the way that I've been structuring math minutes is that my students have five minutes and it has taken some experimentation to figure out like what the time is, but my students have five minutes and I don't put a five minute timer up on the board. I put a stopwatch up on the board. And so it starts at zero and it goes to five minutes and all of the kids have 50 questions and those are based on like whatever we're working on that week. So if we're working on certain tables or if we're trying to tackle the hard facts, they'll have that math minute probably like four times a week we do this. Then my students will do it. Whenever they are able to finish all 50 questions, they look up at the smart board and they write down whatever their like finishing time was. And so I find that this is really effective because my students who can do 50 questions in like under two minutes, that's awesome. They still get to write their one minute, 48 seconds time down. But my students who are still working on their basic facts and need like the whole five minutes or four and a half minutes have the time that they need to get a lot of questions done. In the beginning, I started with like two, three minutes and we would write down how many questions we got done. So it was kind of about seeing where my students were at in the beginning, which is always a good idea. And now it's really about making sure everyone has the chance to get the 50 questions done and five minutes seems to allow for that. Now I know there's a lot of negativity surrounding math minutes and timed drills for students. So you absolutely have to do whatever works for your kids. This is absolutely not something I would have put in place with my students last year because I had extreme varying levels and a lot of exceptionalities with students in that class. So I wouldn't have put this in place. So I'm really kind of looking and observing. I've been with my kids for six months now, so I'm, being careful that what I'm doing in the classroom is going to work with the group of kids I have. So just take this with a grain of salt. What I have decided to do, because my students have been asking for something like this, is we're going to use that bulletin board for them to write down their best finishing time and keep updating it as we do math minutes. 
So, like I said, if I have a student named Sally and Sally finishes her math minute at two minutes and 34 seconds, then she can go up to the bulletin board. She can find the spot where her little name tag is and she can write two minutes and 34 seconds. And then when we do a math minute later in the week, if she beats that time, she gets to erase her previous time and update it and so on and so forth. And so what I'm really trying to encourage and what I will definitely um, emphasize with my kids is competing with yourself. We're not putting our scores up there to look at each other's scores and see how fast people can do and find out who's the fastest in the class. Like that isn't the goal at all because something that I always remind my students is it really doesn't matter how fast the person is next to you because you don't get to live that person's life. And so if they're really good at multiplication, that's great for them, but you need to worry about what you can do because you're the only person who is you're gonna go through life with. I talk about it with my kids all the time and I always emphasize doing your best instead of caring about what other people can do and my kids are a very kind and respectful group this year so like I said this will work for my class if it ever didn't I'd rip down the bulletin board and move on but I know that it will and so I've observed my class and I think that this is going to be a really cool opportunity and it's really going to help them to be competitive with themselves and consistently be striving to improve which I think brings in that like accountability. So what I found was this teachers pay teachers um, name tag creator and it's from the nature of teaching and so all it has is a place for the student to write their name and then it says hashtag goal getter which I love and then there's a blank space down here and I think this was developed probably for goal setting since it says goal getter so I thought it was perfect for what we're doing. I typed in all of my students' names and I printed them on colored paper. This is the back, obviously. Um, but they all have their name at the top. They all have their own little nameplate and they'll be able to write their time on there. I laminated them so that we can use magic erasers to erase. Laminating can be really tricky to erase with some whiteboard markers, so I'm praying this will work. But I have had success in the past with using magic erasers to erase on lamination. So I am hoping that this will work. Now, the other thing that I found to do yesterday, which I thought was really cool, and I somehow learned this from someone else on my staff, because we have an Ellison machine, and if you're not familiar with what that is, it's like a letter cutter, and so that's how we make like our bulletin board letters, and we don't have to go out and buy all of them or do like fancy cutting techniques. It's just literally, you push something down, it like weighs it down and stamps out the letter. Anyway, one of, I guess, like the drawbacks is that the only way you can have like fancy patterned letters is if you buy patterned paper. And so the other day I was walking by the Allison machine and I saw that a teacher had printed off like striped paper and was stamping out their letters doing that. So I was like, whoa, that's really cool. So yesterday I printed out striped paper and I stamped out striped letters and I think that they're so cute. So I stamped out the words fast facts and so that's gonna be like the title of my bulletin board. And then I have all of my students and name plates um, that I printed off on colored paper, laminated and cut out last night. And so I'm going to make that bulletin board right now and I will show you like from a distance <laughs> what it looks like in the end. The other thing I wanna do after that is tackle my anchor chart problems. So after I do the bulletin board, I will check in with you about my anchor charts and show you what my plan is for those. You're the night sky trying to make me see your stars. The dark gets lonely. Now I see violet. I can feel silence. And the dark's all that I see. When your stars have burnt out, and your heart makes no sound, I'll find violet in your eyes. He'll always be my night sky. Silence. 
I just hung my anchor charts as you saw so this is not something fancy but I put some command hooks at the top and then I just ran a curtain rod across the command hooks and then I was able to pick up these like giant binder rings at my local dollar store so those were awesome because it gives like a little bit longer of like a hanging distance for the anchor chart. So right now I stacked just a few of my multiplication anchor charts and that way I can easily flip through and put the one at the front that I want the kids to be using or that might be helpful to them during math class right now. All right, the next thing that I really want to get done, I was trying to come up with a plan on how I can help my kids with their hard facts. And something that I was thinking about is that like anytime I'm sitting in a room especially if I'm a little bit bored, I look around the room and like if there's a poster or something, I tend to like read whatever's on the poster like 25 times in my head until I basically have it memorized. And sometimes I'm concerned that like what I put up in the classroom is not useful for kids if they're not actually gonna look at it and read it. But then when I think about myself in those situations, I do read what's around me. So I think at least some of my kids are probably like that, I don't know. So I had bought these, this little banner kit at the Dollar Tree at the start of the year and I didn't use them for anything. So I pulled them out and it's literally just circles and they're string. So I was thinking I could write the hard facts on here, like all of the hard facts that we have and then kind of string the banner at the top of my whiteboards because my students are all facing the whiteboard during the day and then switch them out every week and just every now and then like point to one and ask the kids for the answer. And I was talking to one of my students about it because she was telling me she's having a hard time memorizing the hard facts. And so I said, like, what could I do to help you? And so I shared this idea and I asked her if she thought it would be important for me to have the answers or to not have the answers. And she said like, what if we started on Monday and we all came up with the answers together. And so then like Monday and Tuesday, the answers were up, but then the rest of the week we erased the answers. So I thought that was a good idea. So I was thinking I could write the problem on here, stick it up on the whiteboard, like with the banner, and then underneath on Monday and Tuesday, we could have the answer and then I can just erase it because it's on the whiteboard. So that was one of my students' ideas, which I absolutely love. And I always like incorporating their ideas into what we do. So I think I'll spend the next little bit. I don't know if I'll finish this today. I might laminate them and then take them home in that way. I can cut out my laminating at home and also this will last me a long time because I could see using this like year after year. So I think I'll take a few minutes and write the hard facts on here and I believe it comes with 25. Yes, but I have two packs. So depending on how many facts I deem as being hard for my kids, which we've brainstormed these facts multiple times so I know which ones they have trouble with. Um, I will likely just use one pack, but if I need to open the other, I absolutely will. hard facts circles so I am just gonna hang them up right now 
it didn't take me very long so like if i ever had to do it again it's not the end of the world and it'll save some laminating <laughs> they turned out like so I decided to put four on this whiteboard and then four on the other whiteboard so that way students on each side of the class can get good at their facts but they are different so we'll focus on eight different facts and I'll probably leave them up there for a couple of weeks so like I said the first couple days we'll have the answers underneath and then I'll erase the answers and perhaps like just throughout the day and stuff ask the kids questions and just randomly be like, what is 12 times five? <laughs> and just surprise them and get them thinking about their facts throughout the day. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is also like a grade five, six PLC kind of goal or I guess strategy that we've come up with. And one of the things we've all been dealing with this year, and I'm sure you can relate if you're a teacher, is that we have a lot of students who are absent and of course, there's like other things other than COVID, but we have had a lot of absences due to like fear of COVID, um, isolation requirements, quarantining. So students are missing all the time. My class has actually been pretty good, so I'm very fortunate. But one of the things that one of our grade six teachers has recommended to us that she does in her classroom is she has folders that are for absent kids and she puts it on their desk in the morning if a student isn't there and then throughout the day all of the work for that student is put in the folder or if they're absent for a longer period of time the folder stays on the desk and the work is put in there and then when they return to school they're assigned a buddy or they choose a buddy and that buddy is in charge of catching them up on the work in the missed folder so either during free time in class or they can stay in for a recess and work together but that way it kind of takes some of the responsibility off of the teacher of getting a student caught up. And I know in my class, one of the things that happens all the time is somebody misses a day and then when they come the next day, they're like, Miss Lloyd, I didn't get this paper and I don't have any extra copies or somehow they vanished or I threw them in the garbage or it was left on that student's desk and then thrown out when that student's desk was sanitized in the evening. So so much can happen and it can get so frustrating to try to keep kids on track so when i was at the dollar store today i just got these simple colored file folders and there's five of them i think i have never really had more than five kids absent at a time again i'm really lucky so i am just going to put on the front of these um we missed you and then I'm gonna explain this process to my kids on Monday. And this is something that we're really going to try and something that I'm experimenting with because in the past I have sent packages home if a student is absent or like when they get back to school, it's just like, we'll get you caught up as we go sort of thing. So I'm hoping that this kind of puts some more of the responsibility and accountability on my kids. <music>
last thing that I am going to take on today is something that I want to go home with students probably next week. We have a little bit of a long weekend because the teachers have teacher convention around Valentine's Day. And so the kids have a five day weekend, I think. And so I like to send this letter home around that time if I didn't get to send it home over Christmas break, which I didn't. Anyway, this letter is called like a supplies I need letter and it just goes home to parents, but it's something that I do with my class. So I give everybody this letter that I'm about to write and it just talks about, um, that we use supplies in the classroom every single day and we may run out or use up all of our supplies. So it is important to replenish any of our supplies that we do regularly use in the classroom and that we don't have anymore. So I have been driven a little bit crazy lately because my students tend not to have scissors and it's kind of funny because I have this little bucket of scissors and there's eight pairs in here. And if we're doing a craft that requires scissors, that little bucket will be empty. And so I have eight kids out of my 23 right now who either don't have scissors or can't find their scissors. And so I think it's really important to teach them one, like respect, like you have to take care of your materials. And then two, like I can't supply everything that 23 kids need. And I always word it to them, like if I buy you guys everything that you need, my own children one day will not have what they need. And so I really can't, I, and I do it to a certain point. So I find like things like glue sticks, pencils, sometimes like pencil crayons or crayons, depending on the art that we're up to or like amount of coloring the kids like to do. In grade five, coloring is often like in their free time versus like actual assignments. But those supplies tend to like wear out in December, January, February. And it is a battle for the rest of the year if you do not send a letter like this home. So I'm gonna type up a quick letter. And with my students, we're gonna go over the supplies that we should have in the classroom. And I always get them to write down what they don't have. And so I don't go over like anything ridiculous or something that I do have. Like I have a whole bin of rulers. If they ever need rulers, they're to borrow one and then return it scissors though like if you don't have your own pair of scissors you really should because we cut in almost every subject area like there's always like flip books or crafts or um sorts that they have to do so it's not just art that they need scissors for and glue as well like some of these supplies end up being really expensive so if i'm providing them for all of my students like it just really starts to wear on me financially and so this is a strategy that I have. I always remind parents that they can hit up a dollar store to replenish some of these supplies. I'm not trying to put pressure on them financially. I just really am trying to make sure the kids have what they need to be successful. So I word it that way in the letter and I word it that way with the students. This is what you need to actually be successful in grade five. So please talk to your parents about it. And I also encourage the kids, like if this is, if these are supplies that you have lost, then you need to offer to your parents to do something to earn the money to buy new supplies because if you're not taking care of things in the classroom then your parents shouldn't be buying you the new supplies you should be earning the money to do so the letter I just explained to parents that we're running out of some crucial supplies and then I also always let parents know that I have spoken to the kids about responsibility but I do also tell them that typically the reason that we don't have the supplies is because we have just run out from using them on a daily basis which I think is perfectly normal um, I do my best to make my school supplies at the beginning of the year like I try to make it a manageable list for families and that way if we need replenishing we can do it now and of course if families can't afford it or are unable to swing it financially right now I will absolutely support them but this is really helpful to me for those families who can replenish the supplies to do so. So I only leave six lines because typically it is just like scissors and like two glue sticks or like a box of pencil crayons like most of my kids aren't going to write six things here but I leave this space so I write the note sign it with my name and then I put items blank needs so that the student can write their name in there and then I leave six lines at the bottom so that the kids can write in there if there is supplies that they are missing. 
And like I said, I go over it with the kids so that I don't just have kids writing down stuff that they want. I'm really, really careful about it and I will check their list before it goes home with them. All right, you guys, I am going to call it a wrap for today's video and head home and enjoy what's left of my Saturday evening. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I already feel so much better about how much I've been able to get done the past couple of days and I pretty much covered everything on my list. There's only two things I need to do. One is make my February newsletter and calendar and the other is to correct a math test that my students wrote last week. So I can do both of those things from home. So I am feeling really accomplished about everything that I was able to get done in the classroom these past couple days. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I have lots of great content coming at you in February. A couple of the videos that will be coming up next week, I'm going to film a what I eat in a school day. And I'm also probably going to film a day in the life vlog. I have an Amazon haul coming up and I also am going to do another week in the life video and just keep up with those vlogs throughout February. So please make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that. Leave a comment below because I love to hear from you and I will see you in my next one.